All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me today. So let's put the rotating assembly in this 4020. Parts are coming back. Parts are here from the machine shop. So let's get the, the rods connected to the pistons and uh, get the crankshaft installed. And then let's install the liners and piston assemblies and get our, our mains and rods torqued up and, and bolted down. And, and let's see how that turns out. The wife's going to do some fancy cinematic cinematography. Um, camera work to make an exciting video and so let's see how this one turns out this is what it looks like when we get it back from the machine shop um, they got a beautiful beautiful primer on it um, everything looks good we got the o-rings already in the bore there we'll lift the mains off we'll get our bearings in then we'll set the crank in and then put our mains on our caps and get them torqued up and then make sure the crank still rolls. And then we got our liner assemblies out. We got our new rod bolts are already in our rod caps. <clears throat> so that the rod comes back, they've cleaned up the big bore, put a new bushing on that end. And so then we'll just knock, knock this piston down just enough to sneak that wrist pin in and assemble them, and then we'll put them in there. So our mains are in, everything's pre-lubed, ready to go. Lots of grease on our thrust bearing. Everything's pre-lubed on the bearing. And we'll bring her in and set her down. You're looking good. There we go. Nice. On our mains, we're gonna look for this locking tab of the bearing and you match it to that locking tab. <clears throat> They're usually also numbered on the cam side. So we'll lube all them up, get them in, and then torque them down. We'll torque each one 150 is what they snap. We got the shop floor we're going against. Snap. And then give it a little paint so then we know that it's torqued. Go on down and when they're all torqued, after each one, you can give the crank a little wiggle. Does it still turn? Then we're good to go. So we knock, I take the dead blow and I like to just knock that piston out just enough to get that hole passed. And then we get that snap ring out. And then we take our we're running low. Karen, let's put a oil engine lube on our wrist. We're running low. A little dab will do ya. Da, 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 da. We're looking for front on our rod, and we're looking 
looking for it front. I almost need a light. Right there. Front. Show me that. Where's that? Right here. Yes. So front is up on the piston. There's a front down in there. The piston's marked front. The rod is marked front. So we took this one out. We put it in there. I think. <laughs> I think Teddy. Oh, did he find the wire brush again? <laughs> <laughs> See if you found the wire brush again. It bites back. Probably the wire brush. <laughs> so you saw how it kind of stuck. It's stuck. Don't take a hammer, just drive it. Just work its way. And then uh, we put the snap ring back in. There it clicked into place, that one's wide open. There it clicked into place, that one's wide open. And we're, we're good to go. That's assembled. That's it. Lube the heck out of these O-rings. Use a non-petroleum based, I like soap. Otherwise John Deere has special lube, but get them both top and bottom. Lube the beekeepers out of them. And then uh, the bottom of that liner. front on our piston. It was right behind me on the 8640. The milk stool or the sitting stool? The sitting stool. Don't know. They're both behind me. Huh? Oh, there you go. Should sink through the top one pretty easy. Pretty slick. <clears throat> With the rod, you got your grooves, so you can't no. put it on backwards. So we got number two and number five in. You just, I don't know, put the bearing in it and slide it into place and we'll put the cap on. And then we'll put a bolt before we roll the crank over so we don't push a liner back out. 55 pounds. We're gonna to torque to yield, which means we go another 90 degrees. So 
we're putting our indicator line on there. go cool.